Alright, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I know y'all are feeling good about what we just saw, man. We're gonna call that the Hail Maryland Miracle. Hail Mary in Maryland Miracle. The Washington Commanders beat the Bears. We're here to analyze every single player from every single position group, both good and bad. Jada Daniels is the MVP of the NFL. I don't care what y'all say. This defense is elite. I don't care what y'all say. And Austin Cyborg saved us today. Also, this rookie draft class is absolutely insane we're gonna dive into all that in a more but before we do make sure you stiff on that like button stiff on the subscription button and stiff on the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned because y'all know me man i'm keeping y'all updated on everything commanders where the trade deadline's coming up so you know i'm gonna keep y'all updated on any rumors any moves that we actually make any reports that we're interested in somebody any trades that actually happen i'll break down that player and how they fit on in the offense the defense or whatever man but i'm just so excited i mean at this point my voices have gone but i gotta make sure i get this video out tonight so let's go ahead and dive into this man again i'm doing two three videos a day and if you're a channel member you're gonna get exclusive access to the exclusive film sessions i'm sorry this past week i was super busy so i wasn't able to get them done but this week i promise you we are on that super this game especially guys like johnny newton but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into this video let's get it adam adam Man, we broke the black jersey curse, y'all. It was looking like the black jersey curse. I'm telling you, that whole game, it just felt like we outplayed them for, like, the vast majority of that game. And then to almost lose like that, it was really about to hurt. But Jaden Daniels and Noah Brown broke the black jersey curse forget you dan snyder we broke that also take a look at this angle from how everybody celebrated on the team from the team man this is beautiful right here man <laughs> And then do you see your head coach and your general manager embracing like we just won the Super Bowl, man? And then also take a look at this angle of the players walking in through the locker room and the energy and passion and just excitement that they have, man, too. And then, of course, shouts out to John Khan for this angle of what the stadium looked like while everybody was leaving out. It was a celebration. It was a movie out there. And okay, yeah, your, your head coach and your general manager are excited. How about your owner? Look how excited Josh Harris was after that win. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but Tyreek Stevenson was taunting the crowd 
while the Hail Mary play was being snapped. Like, Jaden Daniels was already starting to run around for his life, which we're going to get to because that Hail Mary play, yeah, there's some element of luck to that. But the way that Jaden Daniels dodged, all of those should have been sacks that would have put the game away. And then to get the ball up there at the right angle, I mean, just phenomenal. We'll get there. But while the Hail Mary play is over, like, the ball is snapped. Jaden Daniels is already maneuvering around. Tyreek Stevenson is pointing at the crowd and taunting the crowd. And then you see the play happen. And then it's crazy because the same guy that was taunting the crowd and Tyreek Stevenson was the one that ended up tipping the ball to Noah Brown. Check it out right here. Yes, sir, man. And that's the same guy Terry McLaurin was talking crazy to during the game. I don't know what Tyreek Stevenson did to him, but I, I mean, you very rarely see Terry McLaurin that passionate and talking that much trash during a game. And that was well before the whole Hail Mary thing. So I don't know what Tyreek Stevenson did, but he must have pressed the right buttons to get Terry McLaurin to basically come out of character. And I mean, he was talking crazy from the side. Like, we're going to get there. But also, I want to let y'all know that the Washington Commanders are 6-2 and two for the first time since 2008 and 4-0 four and four and at home for the first time since 2005. That is absolutely amazing, man, right there. You can't ask for much more, man. You, you really can't. I mean, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I feel like we really deserve this win. That I mean, that was a hard-fought win, especially the defense. The defense really deserved that win. And we're going to talk about Benjamin St. Juice later and, and really everybody because we're going to go through every position group and everything. And it just sucks because I feel like he had like 95% of that game. He got beat once early in the game, and then he had that terrible play at the end. I'm not wiping that away. That was a terrible play. Literally, he could have just took a nap after the ball was snapped. And Caleb Williams overthrew the receiver so bad that it wouldn't have mattered. Like that J Benjamin St. Juice, we could have had 10 men on the field, Benjamin St. Juice on the sideline, and we would have stopped them right there and ended up winning the game. So, But I still want to acknowledge the fact that that's just the nature of the position. You could be A1 on point 90% of the game, and then you make the one huge mistake that loses you the game, and everybody's going to be on your neck. But I do want to acknowledge the fact that Benjamin St. Juice had a pretty good game. But at the same time, dog, what was that? What was that, man? We'll get there, though. And also, just to let you know, man, again, to remind you, we haven't lost at home all season. We are 4-0 at home, which is absolutely amazing right now. I'm absolutely in love with this team. Also, before the game even started, Rick Snyder said that right now, it's, it, it felt like at, at a certain point in that game, it was like 90% Commanders fans, maybe 10% Bears fans, maybe 95-5 or something like that. And we needed that because this crowd forced a lot of miscommunication among the, the Bears offense, like some false starts some delay at games and things like that so all y'all that went to that game y'all deserve credit for that win as well y'all definitely affected that game and put our defense in better situations to where they only have to cover it's third and long after a false start or a delay a game and things like that because of the crowd being so loud we finally have a home field advantage y'all we finally have a 12th man like the seattle seahawks have had for forever or a lot of these great franchises have had for forever but it's always been like the chicken and the egg situation the home crowd will come if you win but also the home crowd being there helps you win so which one comes first it seems like we've just done both at the same time ever since Dan Snyder sold the team and now we have a franchise quarterback and Jada Daniels we're able to accomplish both again they help each other home crowd getting loud helps you win games winning games helps your home crowd get louder they're mutually beneficial it's amazing also there was apparently at a certain point in that game when the defense was on the field that they did some stadium light show and I think that was the first time that's ever happened at that stadium ever since we moved from RFK to Landover, Maryland. That was the first time anybody has ever seen anything like that and that was really nice. I wish I was at the game to actually experience it. Now injury wise before we dive into all of the position groups of course we're going to start with Cliff Kingsbury first though but injury wise we definitely have some updates man because I mean we were down to our third tackle that game. We went into the game with Brandon Coleman already out dealing with a concussion situation going through concussion protocol at least I feel like I'm optimistic that he'll be ready to play against the Giants next week but golly we got to the point where I mean early in the game Andrew Wiley went to the sideline with his helmet on and then so Trent Scott had to step in at right tackle then Andrew Wiley came right back into the game soon afterwards and was fine good to go so I was like okay good exhale 
And then Cornelius Lucas ended up heading to the sideline. And then Trent Scott had to come in at left tackle. And he was selling us. I'm not going to lie. Some penalties, some bad blocks. I do. I mean, our offense overall, Cliff Kingsbury needs to do a better job of play calling. A lot of our guys need to do a better job of executing our receivers. I mean, can y'all catch a pass? I mean, it's crazy because Noah Brown had the game winning play the hell mary i'm not taking anything away from him from that play but he was having one of the worst games i've ever seen from him even from his times with dallas or the houston texans as far as just dropping a lot of passes now granted some of those passes were inaccurate from Jaden daniels so he deserves a little bit of like leeway for that but it's, he just seemed like he was dropping everything and then he caught the most important pass so i'm not mad at it but either way it was just a lot of selling going on especially on the offensive side of the ball trent scott after he came into the game was selling us the wide receivers couldn't catch cliff kingsbury was and calling his best game it was ugly overall but at a certain point Cornelius Lucas had to limp to the locker room so we were at a point where Trent Scott was just starting left tackle Andrew Wiley who was I guess banged up he had to come out for a play maybe maybe he wasn't I don't know what that was but either way we were down to our third tackle where Cornelius Lucas headed to the locker room and Brandon Coleman was out before the game even started and then they officially listed him as questionable to return with an ankle injury they could have just straight up said he was out remember when Jonathan Allen tore his peck they said he was out immediately to say that Cornelius Lucas was questionable means that the, the injury may not be that bad Bad, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that he'll be ready to play against the Giants so we'll see what happens there because remember we were running a two tackle two left tackle system even though Brandon Coleman was like the starter the past couple of weeks he was still splitting snaps almost evenly like dead center with Cornelius Lucas basically Brandon Coleman would play half the game Cornelius Lucas would play the other half of the game and they kind of go back and forth but now without both tackles or even if Brandon Coleman comes back from concussion protocol now having Cornelius Lucas will that will be the first time Brandon Coleman's ever started a full game in his young NFL career as a rookie so we got to keep watch on that this injury situation is definitely very interesting now moving on to Cliff Kingsbury man I mean the first half I thought he was cooking I mean overall the offense was kind of like 20 to 20 they really couldn't stop us especially the first three quarters 20 to 20 they couldn't stop us in the fourth quarter they could but like going from our 20 yard line to their 20 yard line seemed like it was just easy and seamless and then for some reason once we got to the red zone we couldn't score now granted when you get to the red zone it's tougher to score the defense has less space to cover so they're they're pretty it feels like they're everywhere it feels like it's more players on the field for the defense when the offense is going against them because there's less space to cover um and it, it just has this a feeling that from from the offense's point of view man this defense feels like they got 15 people on the field right now so it's relatively understandable but we've been so great at red zone offense lately that i'm just shocked that even though the bears defense is really good that we struggled that much and i'm also questioning cliff kingsbury because i'm like where was brian robinson in like the third quarter it just seemed like we came out from halftime and brian robinson did didn't even touch the ball for like three or four possessions or something like that I was very confused and we kept trying to throw the ball and I wanted to run the clock out with a nice lead and even like some third and shorts fourth and short situations why didn't we just run it with Brian Robinson I was very confused by that but again the first half outside of the bad red zone efficiency and I blame penalties I blame mistakes from like the receivers dropping passes the offensive lineman not blocking well more than I blame Cliff Kingsbury for the first half but then the second half I felt like Cliff Kingsbury deserved a share of the blame there but man I felt like Cliff Kingsbury came out with a great game plan to start the game I mean I just feel like the way that he got Jaden Daniels' legs involved early to make sure that the Bears have to worry about this you have to worry about this do not sit here and just think because Jaden Daniels barely started in this game and he was hurt leading up to this game that you're going to be able to just ignore his ability to use his legs and just defend everything else and limit our offense like that no Cliff Kingsbury made sure the first drive of the game that he was going to make sure that they had to honor and cover and worry about Jaden Daniels' legs all game and I really appreciate that because that was more like a mental mind game chess move I really appreciate him for that also shouts out to him orchestrating 35 rushing yards for Brian Robinson within the first drive now granted Brian Robinson only finished with 65 rushing yards so after that first drive he only had 30 rushing yards after that that but I mean I just really I mean that was a beautiful first drive it really sucked that we didn't end up scoring a touchdown there because it was very well orchestrated from Cliff Kingsbury we just got to do better at executing and everything like that um and I saw Montez Sweat trying to get after Jaden Daniels and trying to do some late hits and it looked like they a lot of the defensive players for the Bears were trying to hurt them it seemed like even plays where Jaden Daniels wasn't involved they would just try to make sure they get a hand on him and tap him a little bit just to kind of make sure he's you know he's okay and stuff like that a little bully ball and stuff like that didn't work because we got the win ha ha but I 
by the way, Montez Sweat, you were one of those people that were guilty of that. Speaking of Montez Sweat, he also talked trash before the game. So I'm really happy that we got that dub over him. Tyreek Stevenson was clearly talking trash all throughout the game. But either way, in the first quarter, we had 140 net yards, six first downs, two of four on third downs with six points. The Chicago Bears only had 38 yards, two first downs, zero of two on third downs with zero points. The first quarter, we dominated. And I thought even going into halftime that we would probably end up dominating this game, but we just couldn't put them away because we couldn't score in the red zone. It was really annoying. Also, I felt like we got robbed. Of course, the refs are always going to hate on us, but I, I do have to admit that even though the refs were selling us and they were definitely on the Bears side way more often than they were on our side, especially that Zach Ertz touchdown because I'm just confused. My main thing with the refs is why do we never get the 50 50 calls? I feel like if that's the Chiefs or somebody and they throw that and that's a catch to Travis Kelsey instead of Zach Ertz, and that exact same scenario happens in the end zone, they just call it a touchdown on the field. And then, of course, after you replay it, the, the evidence isn't conclusive enough to where you can switch the call either way. But it just feels like the commanders never benefit from the 50 50 calls, whereas a lot of other teams do. So that's really annoying because I understand after you get to the replay, yeah, that's not enough conclusive evidence to maybe reverse it, even though I would have, even as a, an objective fan that's not even take the commander side out of it i thought that, that was a touchdown just in general live and replay but i can make the argument that okay when you're looking at the replay it's not conclusive enough to change the call but why in the first place was that not a touchdown just call period just off rip why was why the 50 50 calls never go our way type of thing so that really irritates me but either way at the same time my main point was is that we were shooting ourselves in the foot as well like the, the the refs were hating on us the refs were definitely on the bear side it felt like they paid them it felt like vegas was making some calls in that game but we were also shooting ourselves in the foot and if we would end up losing that game it kind of felt like we deserved it with the way we were shooting ourselves in the foot even though again to clarify the refs did feel like they were cheating man but man cliff kingsbury did some masterful things throughout the game he had his flashes he had his lows but overall he had some flashes of greatness out there and i also love the fact that like when we got the ball back and it was 55 seconds left in the second quarter and we only had like one timeout and that's one thing we really got to work on why do we call so many not ready timeouts and why does it feel like every time we call a not ready timeout immediately afterwards we have a bad play anyway Jaden Daniels gets sacked uh, we have a, a loss of four and a run play to Brian Robinson or something like that it just seems like we call these timeouts because we're not ready which is already bad but then immediately after we come back from the timeout we have some sort of a negative play it's like you might as well not have called the timeout anyway but if we were going to have a negative play anyway how much could it have been if we didn't call the timeout you might as well have taken the delay game i prefer first and 15 over second and 15 after a Jaden daniel sack so that's one of my biggest pet peeves but i felt like before we went into halftime shouts out to cliff kingsbury not even just from the execution and the play calling but even just to have the guts to go for that because i feel like old burgundy and gold teams led by ron rivera and maybe even jay gruden 55 seconds left with only one timeout starting from like your own 10 yard line they don't go for the the point they just go ahead and take a couple of knees and get to halftime safely. We tried everything we could to get points out of that, and we were not that far away from getting something going there. And it also felt like that the offense kind of learned something, something clicked there, and we carried that momentum into the third quarter. Um, but uh, overall, again, I mean, I can't be too mad at Cliff Kingsbury. Can't be, especially with the refs taking away some of our touchdown calls. Now, granted some of the times those were the right calls to make like a Samuel Cosme illegal man down the field but I just feel like again that's a petty call that some teams may not get that called against them and I just thought that after Dan Snyder sold the team and we finally got a franchise quarterback in Jaden Daniels we wouldn't have to deal with stuff like that but it does seem like we still kind of have to deal with stuff like that the refs just not gonna rock with us but that's okay we'll figure it out we're gonna find a way to win the game anyway but again since we're technically in the Cliff Kingsbury part of this video I do want to acknowledge the fact that Cliff Kingsbury didn't have a great game I would argue that overall maybe this is one of his worst play calling days of the year um but overall still a pretty good day I I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of teams out there would take the day that Cliff Kingsbury had today. I'm pretty sure a lot of teams would be more than happy to have an offensive coordinator even play call and coach at the level that Cliff Kingsbury did today. I'm pretty sure. It wasn't great. It wasn't to the expectations that we have learned to have for him, but, I'm, but it still wasn't that bad. There were still some flashes of like, okay, this is the Cliff Kingsbury I've known all season, and then there were also some just like, I don't know what you even thought you were doing right there with some of those play calls, but it is what it is, man. I'm still proud of this team. Um, the offense, I mean, it's amazing that the defense carried the offense, because when, when have we been able to say that at all this season, for real? At first, it was the offense carrying 
in the defense, but that's total team football. I absolutely love it. Um, but again, the refs took back some of our um, touchdown plays. And then shouts out to Scary Terry. He stepped up big time, man. And it just felt like Tony Romo was just jinxing us left and right. Every time he acknowledged the fact that we were on some type of streak, we would end up messing it up and ruining it. It was just ridiculous. Also, speaking of the refs, I almost forgot about this. Why are y'all allowed to stand in the way and cause us to get penalties? One of those Trent Scott false starts, we were ready to call to snap the ball for forever. The ref is in the way for no reason. The Bears weren't even substituting a player. And the next thing you know, Trent Scott ends up false starting because he's looking around like, yo, what are we doing? Why are we not allowed to call this play right now type of situation? So refs, I don't know what y'all are doing right now. Also, shouts out to the Bears punter because he put this commander's offense in a lot of really bad situations. We did not start with A1 field position at all day. Now, sometimes the defense got us excellent field position and we started the, with the ball on like their 40 yard line like twice or three times a day but there were some times we were pinned all the way back within our own 10 yard line because that man that that punter from the bears was the truth man now speaking of the truth let's talk about Jaden daniels i mean immediately first throw of the game was a big time completion to zach Ertz. that was a big time throw so that right there calmed my nerves i was like okay maybe he's a little bit healthier than even i thought because all week i was like i think i'm actually pretty optimistic that Jaden daniels will actually play and start versus the bears but even after that that first throw to zach Ertz to start the game for Jaden daniels like okay maybe we're cooking with something here maybe he's a little bit better than i thought and then his first run went for a nine yard gain out of bounds so good job avoiding the hit first of all but also i mean i just i was like okay so we people thought he was hurt i guess not and then later on in the game a, a couple of possessions later he also made more magic with his legs he was using his legs very well i mean at one point he juked linebacker from the bears tj edwards out of his cleats at one time it was like a third and long and he ended up scrambling for the conversion it was ridiculous new set of downs and everything he juked the guy out of the i mean out of the play man and that was one of those plays that separates jd daniels from all of these other quarterbacks in the nfl the only other guy in the nfl that probably could have done that is probably J lamar jackson that's it you can argue i mean i like Kyler murray's athleticism but i'm not sure if he could juke somebody out of their socks like that and then the deep pass to terry mclaurin at the time we needed it the most was just so elite man that was insane stuff in itself i mean there was just so many I'm, you could already make the argument that Jaden daniels is one of the best deep ball throwers in the nfl already man ridiculous man and it was funny too because tony romo was just talking about his accuracy and rib injuries and things like that and then he immediately let loose for that deep bomb so that was like perfect time in there um and then again receivers were letting Jaden daniels down a lot today we're gonna go over his, his final stats for the game towards the end of when, when we're talking about Jaden daniels before we move on to all of the running backs and everything like that but trust me his stats could have been way better if receivers weren't just dropping passes for no reasons man i mean if receivers would have caught a few more passes if the offensive line would have stopped committing penalties we honestly could have had like a 20 plus point half man i mean again i blame the rest for some of it but we were also shooting ourselves in the foot receivers couldn't catch and the offensive lineman couldn't block and that's why we had to keep walking away with field goals it was not a Jaden daniels problem then going into halftime we led nine to zero and this was the second time in as many weeks we had shut out our opponent in the first half so shouts out the defense for that man washington has held their opponent scoreless in the first half in consecutive games for the first time since week 10 and 11 of 1997 what kind of stuff is that man what is like what what do y'all know about that bro we're doing stuff that we haven't done since 1997 this is a new commanders team right now y'all i don't think y'all understand how monumental this stuff is man this is insane also, CBS jinxed us because they show as we were coming out of halftime or as we were going into halftime, Washington had 533 consecutive games without recording a shutout. That was the longest streak in NFL history. We thought we were going to get it, and then we didn't because DeAndre Swift broke open for that ridiculous run. But either way, at halftime, Bears rookie Caleb Williams in his return to home because he is from D.C., 3 of 8 for 33 yards and 2 sacks in the first half. But he did have 29 yards running with scrambles and things like that. But shouts out to the defense and everybody at halftime that led to that 9-0 lead. But, and of course, like going into halftime, we were just dominating the trenches. Then the second half was a slightly different story, but it is what it is. But, I mean, the offense did what they could, man. Shouts out to Mason Kennahan too, because he brought up great points. At the, at the end of the first half, he said, need to finish these red zone drives or else we're going to lose. And, whoa, boy. 
Boy, almost did we. Then great defensive effort and production so far from his defensive line. Frankie Lubu might be the best player to ever strap up the cleats. Run game has averaged over seven yards per carry. Can't get away from it. I don't know why Cliff Kingsbury refused to keep going with that in the second half, especially while we were playing with the lead most of the game. And then also love the energy so far. Keep it up. Those were his halftime thoughts. And so even just moving on from there, Jaden Daniels went into halftime with a 52.63 percentage completion. That's not great for him at all. That That's not to his standard. But he did have 154 yards. He had no interceptions, no sacks. He had 31 rushing yards and a 79 point side passer rating. That's really good. I mean, if Jay, if you would have told me that you know week eight against the Bears a couple of months ago, right after we drafted Jaden Daniels, that that's the game he would have had. That's what that, that would have been his first half. I'm like, okay, cool. That's actually pretty nice. Okay, I'm optimistic about this season. But because he's been so great these first seven weeks up to those two quarters that's actually below the standard that we have for him at this point which i thought was pretty interesting but again up to halftime a few drops and some penalties were the only reason we weren't up like 21 to 0 to be completely honest that's what it literally should have been and that going into halftime also we had 13 first downs to the bears six um we had 267 total yards to the bears 90 we had 7.6 yards per play to their 3.2 um, 154 passing yards to their 13, 113 rushing yards to their 10. We just were not scoring touchdowns. We were getting field goals, and that was the name of the game. It ended up really coming back to bite us at the end of the game. And then coming back from halftime, Jada Daniels had the most beautiful layered pass to Zach Ertz, man. It was like a 20-yard throw. There's three defenders underneath and two defenders above him. Well, really only one above him. But either way, there are four defenders right there. For Jaden Daniels to have that vision and the accuracy right there was absolutely insane. And then it was like a third and three with like 13 minutes left. Jaden Daniels had an elite play where he scrambled and escaped a lot of pressure he should have been sacked by like two three people then he juked out another couple of them to end up getting a first down on that third and three Jaden Daniels had some moments where he literally was Superman where he had to literally put the team on his back and say if nobody else wants to catch the ball or we're not running the ball well I'll just get it myself godly man you I mean just ridiculous also yeah he had a couple of inaccurate passes but also even shouts out to Kirk Binkert for pointing this out that one time Montez Sweat we were in the red zone we ended up kicking the field goal Montez Sweat had a horse collar. You could you could have even called a hip drop on that all-in-one tackle on Jaden Daniels and no call. So shouts out to the refs again. Um, but it is what it is. And th through three quarters, Jaden Daniels had 216 passing yards and 43 yards on the ground with a rib injury. I mean, I'm just telling you, this guy had an amazing game. And then he took a big shot to his left side. He should have got out of bounds on that play, but I saw what he was trying to do. He was just trying to get those extra couple of yards, and I think that ended up mattering. And then there was a whole bunch of other stuff going on throughout the game, of course, that we can nitpick. But most of all, the Hail Mary of all Hail Marys, the Hail Maryland, man, over 60 yards in the air while his ribs were killing him. You saw all throughout the game, they were taping him. That play was absolutely insane, man. To escape all of those should have been sacks which would have just ended the game right then and there and then to just load up ribs killing them throw it over 60 yards i mean just absolutely amazing of course there's a little bit of luck involved there but that took a lot of skill to even put us in the position for luck to step in i, I don't think y'all heard me you got to have a certain le level of skill and talent for luck to even even have an effect on what you're doing right now you know what i'm saying you got to have a certain level of skill to even get to where luck can even help you shouts out to Jaden Daniels for getting us there and now a lot of people are talking about was that the best burgundy and gold play of all time i mean you could argue that's number one some people are saying sean Turler's field goal maybe that's number two Santana Moss down 13 to 0 against the Dallas Cowboys Mark Brunel threw him up two touchdowns to win 14 to 13 at the very last second like the last four or five minutes of the game like craziness I mean that's definitely one of the greatest plays and I love it too because Jada Dales gave you the reaction you expected immediately after the game but by the time he got to the reporters in the middle of the field and had his little interview before he went to the locker room I mean he had the straightest face ever also just to remind y'all Jada Dales rib injury Jaden Daniels down to his left tackle. Jaden Daniels dealing with multiple drops and offensive line penalties through for 326 yards and a miracle walk-off 52-yard touchdown. No turnovers. Eight carries for 52 yards. Stop playing with my boy Jaden Daniels. Now let's move on to the running backs, dog, because I don't think y'all understand how ridiculous that, that play was from Jaden Daniels all day, man. Of course, he made his fair share of mistakes, but that was elite quarterback stuff. Some of his plays that he made in that game was like in MVP of the NFL type stuff like some of them throws pressure in his face off his back foot accurate 20 30 yard passes across the field ribs hurting 
Come on, bro. Stop playing with him, bro. Stop. Now, Brian Robinson had an excellent game today. I don't know why we stopped using him. Again, he had 35 yards to start the game. It was literally the Brian Robinson drive to start the game, dog. He had an amazing start to this game. Austin Eckler wasn't very impactful from what I noticed. I mean, he had a couple of plays. His biggest play was like a play that the Bears gave us. It was the last play at the end of the half. They were like, just don't allow him to get a touchdown. We're chilling. So that was like his biggest play, honestly. I mean, he was pretty productive. Second, seven carries for 52 yards even though one of his big plays was like kind of like the Bears just let him get away with it. It is what it is. Um, but either way, Brian Robinson was the best running back out there today. And for some reason, Cliff Kingsbury decided to stop giving him the ball as much. Maybe he's hurt. Maybe he's a little banged up. Maybe his injuries that, that made him miss a game against the, the, the Ravens ended up coming back. And, and he maybe he tweaked it or something. I don't know. But either way, Brian Robinson... 16 carries, 65 yards isn't bad, but I just thought off of that, that first drive we're here, he had 35 yards on like three or four carries. I thought he was about to absolutely kill it. But Jeremy McNichols deserves some credit because Alameda Zacchaeus had a really big fumble in that game that I feel like a lot of people forgot about, but Jeremy McNichols hopped on it, and that allowed us. I think we ended up scoring three points on that possession later on, so shout out to Jeremy McNichols for that as well. And then, moving on to the wide receivers, man, Terry McLaurin, bro. When you needed him most, he was there all game, bro. All game. The deep bomb reception. Now, one gripe I do have with him. Can you please stop getting shoestring tackled on these deep bombs? We need touchdowns, not field goals. The last time that happened to you was against the Browns, and then Jaden Daniels ended up throwing a red zone interception. It seems like every time Terry McLaurin gets shoestring tackled, we're destined to not end up scoring a touchdown on that position. I wish you could have scored it on that one, but I don't care because outside of that, he absolutely balled out. He was our leading receiver, five catches, 125 yards. Stop playing with my boy Terry. He didn't have a touchdown today, but he deserved one, man. He made so many clutch third down catches. He had the deep bomb receptions. He had that one yak play where he like caught the ball and then ran for like so many yards. And then they like did a late hit on him and everything like that. That ended up extending us 15 more yards because of the personal foul. And then there was a certain point in that game where Terry McLaurin was talking so much trash on the side line to Tyreek Stevenson and just to let you know Terry McLaurin 415 yards at a certain point in that game had passed Ricky Sanders 414 yards for seventh on the franchise's all-time reception list again 415 receptions at a certain point in that game I think that was before he ended up finishing the game as well but I loved how hyped Terry McLaurin was man I mean he was literally telling him you can see it on camera you ain't S-H-I-T, and he was actually saying the cuss word, and again, to see Terry McLaurin get out of his character like that was insane, um, and then outside, and then of course we're going to talk about Noah Brown, but in, in the in-betweens, De'Ami Brown had a great play, but ended up getting called back because of, like, I think that was one of the illegal man down the fields we had from the offensive line, which really sucked, Alameda contributed a little bit, um, um, Luke McCaffrey made a big play on second down for us to make us third and manageable, even though I think nothing came up of it. I think we ended up punting anyway. But Luke McCaffrey, another one of those games where he was open and Jaden Downs wasn't seeing him. Jaden Downs, I'm going to need you to look at Luke McCaffrey a little bit more. Still elite game from you, but Luke McCaffrey's open a lot, and we need to start looking at him. Now moving on to Noah Brown. And this was crazy because this was arguably one of the worst games I've ever seen him play in his entire career. Shouts out to Terry McLaurin stepping up big time when we needed him most every time. It was literally one play. Jaden Downs threw a ball to Noah Brown. He dropped it. Jaden Downs was like, all right, bet. I'm going to target Terry McLaurin. I think it was either the next play or the play right after that that he targeted Terry McLaurin for a big time first down. But Noah Brown couldn't catch nothing all day. And then he makes the game winning Hail Mary catch, man, which is the only reason why I was like, man, that game ball that Dan Quinn gave to Noah Brown honestly should go to Jaden Daniels because I felt like he deserved it more but I understand Jaden Daniels is going to get more game balls because he's an elite player whereas Noah Brown this is a special moment you could give it to him but God Lee you couldn't catch nothing until that Hail Mary God Lee man he's typically been our one of our most dependable receivers so I don't know what happened today but hopefully this is like the worst performance we ever get out of Noah Brown and it only goes up from here but again the Hail Mary catch was insane and y'all know man I love the celebration that was my favorite out of any I, Noah Brown celebration was my favorite out of everybody on the team because while everybody else is going crazy jumping up and down panicking acting like children and I love that too I love the passion I was feeding off of that it was making my eyes water but Noah Brown casually jogging chilling like as if like I do this every day like yeah hell Mary touchdown catch a game winning touchdown catches I just do that that's just another day at the office it was like the equivalent of Damian Lillard after he hit that that game winner on Paul George in the playoffs and then he was like staring at the camera with the 
face like like as if he just does this that's my favorite celebration when people just act like this is what i do i'm just cold like that i expected this i drew this up like this this was a part of the plan celebration like i'm not surprised everybody else surprised everybody else is going crazy i'm chilling like yeah this is what i do i'm sorry that's my favorite type of celebration man i'm not gonna lie that damian lillard straight face after hitting that that shot on paul george while everybody's piled on top of him it's probably my favorite celebration of all time and and noah brown gave me a little bit of that and again tyreek stevenson all that trash talking you were doing to terry mclaurin where were you at first of all terry mclaurin got you for five catches and 125 yards let's start there Let's start there, Vlad. You know what I'm saying? But also, on that last play, you're the one that actually tipped the ball. So, look at you. Thank you, Tyreek Steven. He's a Georgia dog, too. But his command is above all else. So, I got to get on you for that. Also, Terry McLaurin is now currently third in the NFL in receiving yards at 579. That is absolutely insane, man. Terry McLaurin's balling. But also, finally having a franchise quarterback is why he's allowed to do this. Now, granted, we have some Sunday night games. We may have, like, a Monday night game or two. So, we'll see what happens there. But as of right now, Terry McLaurin, I believe, is third in receiving yards. Now moving on to the tight ends. And today was National Tight End Day, and they played like it, man. Ertz pancaked somebody on a big time run that we had in the first quarter. John Bates truck stick somebody, I believe, in the second quarter for a 20 yard gain. I mean, like literally trucked them and then threw them down. Derrick Henry level stuff. And then they were blocking their tails off. Also, Zach Ertz said in the locker room after the game that Hail Mary would not have been, well, Sky Abraham said the Hail Mary would not have been possible without Zach Ertz because he told the media after the game that he was the jumper on that play that was literally his job to tip it back to Noah Brown that's why Noah Brown was separated from everybody and then Ertz even said quote I don't think I actually touched the ball but I'm still taking the hockey assist for sure unquote thank you Zach Ertz thank you all of the tight ends Ben Sennett even though I didn't notice him all game he, he and John Bates blocked their tails off again even Zach Ertz pancaked somebody on the block so the tight ends came to play they came with the right level of energy today and I'm so happy because they contributed to this win now offensive line wise i feel like overall they still gave Jada Daniels enough time to do what they needed to do but man once brandon coleman got hurt and then cornelius lucas got hurt of course trent scott is a third string tackle for a reason so of course there was going to be a dip in production there were going to be more penalties that just is what it is man but the first half i felt like they blocked really well especially run game wise cliff kingsbury was dialing up some elite run scheme play calls and play designs where the, the guards were pulling and things like that it was elite level stuff we typically ask brandon coleman to do that because an elite, he's an elite athlete but since he couldn't play cliff kingsbury had to pivot and make sure that the guards did a lot of that pulling stuff and so that was a great pivot cliff kingsbury deserved a big salute for that for like changing basically his playbook around the fact that he didn't have Brandon Coleman there but either way great blocking from the offensive line overall but Samuel Cosme you got to stop killing drives with those penalties those illegal man down the field and it's crazy because I think it was against like the Bengals or the Cardinals where he was about to be illegal man down the field he thought about it and then literally somersaulted backwards to make sure that he didn't and I'm just like well what happened in this game did you forget that you could do that I don't know but Trent Scott was selling us but at the end of the day thank you Trent Scott for coming in and at least being a body in the way even though you were kind of a turnstile at least you weren't an open door you know what I'm saying there's a difference turnstile is one thing at least you're kind of slowing the guy down a little bit at least you weren't an opening door and I mean again you were selling us a lot of that game but at least when it mattered most you stepped up big time and I really appreciate you for that I wouldn't say it was a good game but at least when at the times we need you the most at least to buy Jaden Daniels a little bit of time when we really needed to run the ball at least a little bit Trent Scott did his thing, man. Bad game, but it could have been worse. And now let's talk about the defense. And shouts out to my boy, Serge the Shooter, because he brings up a great point, man. He said, Witt Jr. gets about two to three more true playmakers. This defense goes to the moon. And I completely agree, man. We are a couple of plays players away on defense to, like, absolutely take off on people, dog. Like, for this defense to be considered one of the elite ones because they had an elite game today. Now, granted, they, of course, had the big play to DeAndre Swift. And then at the end of the game, they allowed that touchdown right there and gave up an an easy two-point conversion but this was arguably their most impressive day of the year because of course the Panthers were so bad offensively they even got to the point where they just put Bryce Young in the game because like why not and things like that and our offense was scoring so much that that we that the Panthers were pretty limited they they were they became one-dimensional because they had to throw the ball because we had such a big lead on them even with Marcus Mariota in the game so I feel like this like as as like the, the 
defensively as a performance i feel like uh this was actually our best performance as, as a team defensively i really i don't think you can beat this man i don't especially again going against the panthers offense or the bears offense and the bears offense scores way more points per game than the panthers offense does their offense is way better also i'm seeing right now that's why i'm kind of distracted a little bit i just saw a tweet that said that actually terry mccloin is the fourth leading receiver in the nfl right now but again we still have another monday night game to get to and things like that but again outside of like the big play to deandre swift and that was just a really well blocked play and also a couple of missed tackles but also a great play from my georgia dog deandre swift that's what georgia dogs do they make plays you know what i'm saying i don't know what to tell you a lot if you look around a lot of my georgia dogs had a great games on sunday today man lad mcconkey leading the way it's but we're not even gonna get there we're on command this time right now but either way outside of the big deandre swift play then that fight those final two drives where we ended up getting the fumble at the end because of a really bad play call from shea waldron and then also the touchdown that, that we allowed after the benjamin st juice pass interference that was completely unnecessary outside of that this defense played the best football they played all season um, literally, especially when you're comparing it to the offense that they went up against, when you're including the degree of difficulty, because again, the Bears offense is way better than the Panthers offense. I absolutely love what we saw from this team today, man. I mean, absolutely beautiful. I mean, they got off to a strong start. I mean, they we had them shut, we had the Bears shut out at halftime and things like that. Like, who predicted that coming into the game, man? And the run defense looks great. Shouts out to the defensive line, especially guys like Johnny Newton. That I'm not saying that we look that we are better without Jonathan Allen but Johnny Newton getting more snaps has been very productive that boy is balling right now man and then shouts out to our team because that one time they went for it on fourth and one they really tried us it was like in the second quarter or something like that of or, or late first one of them times they went for it on fourth and one and we managed to stop them it was amazing that was a beautiful play there that was a huge fourth down stop you had Benjamin St. Juice there initially and holding them up and then Frankie Louvu came to make sure that he fell backwards it was absolutely amazing man that was a beautiful stop right there that was one of the highlights of the game from either side from either team um and and, and I just love the fact that that was like two weeks in a row now that the team went for it on fourth and one on our own 40 yard line on the commander's 40 yard line and both times the defense is held and gave the offense back in the ball with the ball in, in great field positioning so shouts out to the defense man um, and then it took until like late in the second quarter for the Bears to convert their first third down. They were 0-4 up to that point. So the, 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 they were doing everything they could. And then Frankie Louvu was the first to get there one time on a sack. Deron Payne ended up cleaning it up. But Dorrance Armstrong balled out on that play. Frankie Louvu came through free like a madman at Caleb Williams. And then and Deron Payne ended up getting his first sack of the season on that play. But that was an amazing play. I think Dorrance Armstrong deserves a lot of credit for that, man. Also... There was that one time where they were well into field goal range. I think they were on like the 20 something yard line. And then they backed up because of a penalty or a loss of down. I think a loss of yards because of like a negative run play, I think. And then we ended up sacking him for like a loss of 17 or something. And then the one time it looked like they may have been able to score points in the first half, they were forced to, to end up having to punt it because of that 17 yard loss on that sack. That was amazing. And going into halftime, Caleb Williams was three of eight for 33 yards with six for 29 on the ground. I mean, absolutely amazing, man. They had 90 net yards going into halftime, man. The defense was dominant, I would say, in the first half, dog. And even at a certain point, I thought, Technically, that should have been a safety on Caleb Williams. It was 9 minutes, 58 seconds left in the third quarter, and they were backed up in their own end zone. I thought that was a safety. I would honestly say that was intentional grounding. He literally just threw that because he knew he was going to get sacked, and he didn't want to allow a safety. I feel like that was definitely intentional grounding, but it is what it is. Shouts out to the rest for that one too, man. But there was one time on third and 12 in the third quarter, the crowd noise was so loud, and they it was initially third and two, but then it was a it was back-to-back -back false start penalties from the Bears because the crowd affected the game so shouts out to the defense but also shouts out to the crowd man people that were there that were there at the game were saying this is like the loudest they've ever heard the burgundy and grove crowd at least since dan snyder bought the team type of stuff so just amazing i mean now granted the bears offense was bad they were shooting themselves in the foot a lot of the times but the crowd helped us out a lot now it's really nice to finally have a home field advantage y'all y'all i mean it's just it truly is man i mean it was a certain point we had them boys locked up they couldn't do nothing no matter what they tried nothing worked and then 
DeAndre Swift out of nowhere breaks for a 56 yard touchdown and then the game was 12 to 7 and we went from ooh we're a touchdown away from this game being over and early in the third quarter to uh oh we're in serious trouble and it was bad tackling from everybody um at number 96 should have done a better job a lot of the like DBs like Mike Sanders still leaving as great of a game as he had on that play he was caught lacking a little bit as well but man the defense did a good job it looked like knowing what the Bears were trying to do especially with like a lot of their screen plays we blew a lot of those up Mike Sanders still blew one up that forced like it was so it, he blew it up so well that Caleb Williams didn't even throw the screen he just threw it out of bounds and then Deron Payne later on in the game did the same thing where Caleb Williams trying to throw a screen Deron Payne is right there don't throw it it's an interception maybe even a pick six and Caleb Williams has to throw it all out of bounds over the the um the, the target's head so shouts out to the defense for looking like they knew it was coming before it even happened and then shouts out to the defense man for what Whatever that was with the fumble from the offensive lineman, that was a terrible play call from Shane Waldron who's coming from Seattle to the Chicago Bears. They literally brought him in to be the genius that, that, that leads Caleb Williams into being an elite quarterback. But that was a terrible call right there, man. They were already down like three or four offensive linemen due to injuries. And then they chose to run a fullback dive to a backup guard on third and goal when it mattered most. That was crazy. And I'll let you know right now, Trent Scott, you can say a lot of bad things about him, especially from what he did in this game game but he wouldn't have fumbled that we know Trent Scott can catch a pass for a touchdown man he's gonna do what it has to take and then of course at a certain point the defense allowed the the, the well really it was more so the offense but either way the commanders as a team allowed the Bears to go up 15 to 12 before that miracle Hail Mary I think we got we got the ball with only like 25 seconds left that was insane now moving on to the defensive line Johnny Newton was elite today man he had a sack I believe was that his first sack of his career so far well he had a sack early in the first quarter that was amazing I was so happy about that then Jalen Holmes who we signed off the street just over a week ago had a sack as well at some point then Johnny Newton had an elite run stop with four minutes left in the second quarter and then Fedarian Mathis had an elite run stop I think late in the second or early in the third Doris Armstrong again that sack that Deron Payne had Frankie Louvu ran through free but Doris Armstrong was definitely missed you saw it on that play now granted maybe he's still a little banged up he wasn't as effective in this game as I predicted as I hoped um, maybe that injury is still bothering him but that was a great play right there to allow D Deron Payne to finally get his first sack of the season um, some people were saying that our defensive line and played better without Jonathan Allen. I wouldn't necessarily say that, but Johnny Newton getting more plays, getting more snaps, is going to produce better results. And he almost got his second sack of the game, too. Johnny Newton almost had his second sack, but then Caleb Williams, like, threw the ball at the last second while falling down. And it was honestly... It looked like intentional grounding once again. It kind of looked like he just threw it just to avoid the sack to not take a negative play. So that was annoying. Um, so I just hate how that happens, how we're allowing him to get away with that. Refs, so you got to look at that. You got to call it. But man, Johnny Newton was the one that caught that fumble. And he ran it all the way back for a touchdown just in case. And he was so tired on that sideline. But shouts out to Johnny Newton for being there to, to capitalize on that fumble that that offensive lineman had for the Bears. Terrible play call from Shane Waldron, their offensive coordinator. But great job by Johnny Newton to scoop up that fumble, man. So that was his first NFL fumble recovery as well. He has his first sack and his first fumble recovery today. Shouts out to Johnny Newton. Excellent day today from him today. And also, Deron Payne, man. I mean, he had a touchdown saving tackle on Caleb Williams early on, like late in the fourth. I felt like Deron Payne had a pretty good game today as well. Linebackers balled out. Bobby Wagner, elite stuff, man. Elite stuff. He had an elite run stop on third and short. He had a few elite run stops. I believe right now, Pro Football Focus grades him as the best run stop and linebacker in the NFL, and he showed you why in this game. A few of them. I can't even go through and even remember exactly all of the plays, but he had a few of them, man. So, shouts out to him, man. He balled out. Like, what the play before the Benjamin St. Juice and Frankie Louvu stop on fourth and one, the play before that Bobby Wagner had an elite run stop to put us even in that situation so thank you for that and then Frankie Louvu boy he was giving Caleb Williams hell today man he was seeing ghosts because of Frankie Louvu now granted there was one play where Frankie Louvu got juked out real bad twice in one play by Caleb Williams like it should have been like a eight yard sack and it turned into like a 13 yard first down scramble by Caleb Williams because Frankie Louvu missed on the initial hit then when after he fell to the ground he tried to get back up Caleb Williams came his way he missed again but outside of that Frankie Louvu was like literally a ghost for, for Caleb Williams had him seeing ghosts man it was bad it was bad but again Bobby Wagner Frankie Louvu they dominated I, I think I may have seen Jordan McGee may have touched the field a little bit but I don't remember any impact he had in this game but again he's a rookie that missed most of the offseason fifth round 
pick and all of that. He's an elite athlete. He's a very quick learner. Ken Norton Jr. and Frankie Louvu love him. They raved about him all training camp before he got hurt in that first preseason game. But either way, I think Jordan McGee, just be patient with him. I think he's going to be a great player, but maybe not necessarily just this soon, like immediately first game that he's played all year. Again, he got hurt like early in the first preseason game, so he pretty much missed all of preseason as well. But I agree with Ryan Fowler, man. He said nearly eight weeks in, and Frankie Louvre was playing like defensive player of the year candidate. He's everywhere every week, up and down the line of scrimmage and producing at edge and off-ball backer. Sensational ad from Adder Peters and Free Agency. And also, shouts out to Dan Quinn for doing a great job of knowing how to use his hybrid linebackers man he's literally turning Frankie Louvu into an all pro and I'm pretty sure that's why Frankie Louvu left the Panthers to come here because he knew what Dan Quinn had in store for him he saw the vision and now it's paying off then cornerback wise Sanford still balled out today outside of that that big touchdown allowed to my uh, to, to DeAndre Swift that 56 yarder and he was one of like four people that missed on tackle so I'm not putting all of the blame on him Outside of that play, Mike Sanford still balled today. Anybody he was covering, locked up from what I noticed. He sniffed out a couple of screens and forced Caleb Williams to throw the ball out of bounds and literally just incomplete on purpose because Sanford still was making plays and reading, sniffing out everything the Bears wanted to do. It was, it was if, like he was in the huddle with them. And then he had some great run stops. Like have, He made some big hits, especially in the first half. And then speaking of big hits and great run stops, Emmanuel Forbes was the exact opposite because there was one play that the, the, the Bears ran the ball to the outside and then Emmanuel Forbes literally looked like he was scared to make the tackle and I think he literally got benched right after that play at least for a long time I mean he probably came back into the game at a certain point but he got benched for a long time and again just to remind y'all of Benjamin St. Juice I felt like outside of two plays, the pass interference that allowed them the, the Bears to take the lead at the end of the game, towards the end of the game, because not at the end of the game, because we ended up winning the game. And then early on, um, at a certain point, he got juked out and, and like allowed a lot of separation. I, it may have been like two plays he allowed, easy receptions, and then he also had that pass interference. Outside of those three plays, I think Benjamin St. Juice actually played pretty well today. But the All-22 is going to tell you everything you need to know about the secondary, especially, especially. That's why in these review videos immediately after the game, it's really hard for me to talk extensively but extensively about the secondary because it's hard to even see them there's the script the, the broadcast view that we watch as fans from cbs and all of these networks don't even show us the secondary most of the time but i love it at a certain point dj moore was so upset he was throwing a fit because benjamin st juice was locking him up at a certain point he looked like a crybaby out there at one point so benjamin st juice had a great game overall he just had three really bad mistakes especially that last one that he had man but yeah no ignominy san still y'all gotta do a better job of tackling on that 56 yarder but outside of that they played well i mean thank goodness for all of them Safety wise, Quan Martin deserves a lot of credit. He was heavily involved in the in the run stopping effort that we had for this game. You know, typically your safeties aren't the guys that are always coming up, especially Quan Martin's technically your free safety. And he stepped up and made some plays today. Percy Butler played well today. He had a great special teams play, which we're going to talk about soon because we're about to move on to special teams. And Jeremy Chen, I didn't really notice him today, but a lot of the times when it comes to safeties and, and just DBs overall, if you don't notice the fact that they were even in the game, that's probably a good thing because that means that they didn't allow a bunch of big plays to happen to him they also didn't make plays and Jeremy Chen has had a, a past couple of great weeks um, but today it kind of seemed like he wasn't out there but again that's probably a good thing but Quan Martin was clearly out there Quan Martin hooped today dog Quan Martin at a certain point no actually he finished the game with the most tackles on the team with 11 Bobby Wagner was second with seven four less tackles and also he had the most solo tackles with nine on the team and the only part in only person even kind of close to him was Bobby Wagner with five. So Quan Martin nearly doubled the, the guy with the second most solo tackles on this team. He led the team in solo tackles. He also had a tackle for loss, which is tied for first place with Deron Payne, Johnny Newton, and Jalen Holmes. So Quan Martin was everywhere on the field today. We needed him to win this game. He played a big part into how we were so successful on defense today. So shouts out to Quan Martin, man. And then all, even though I'm surprised he didn't call for that, get called for that penalty on that late hit while Caleb Williams was sliding and kind of hit him in the helmet and everything. I was surprised they didn't call that. So the refs gave us one there, but they gave the Bears a lot more. So that's not going to make up for it. Also, moving on to special teams, Austin Cyborg, a.k.a. Austin Cyborg. Uh, I know his name is technically Cyborg, but I naturally pr pronounce it as Cyborg because I keep accidentally calling him Cyborg because I'm telling you, when you're that automatic, you got to have a little bit of AI robot in you. But 
either way, um, at a certain point, we were still not even in the second half yet. We were still like the first or the second quarter. He at a certain point had 82 points through week eight, which passed Mark Mosley 81 points through week eight in 1983 three for the most points in franchise history through eight weeks in a single season and again he ended up making more field goals after that so he more than killed that record also at a certain and at that same point still only before the even the, the halftime he had 21 total made field goals which is the most by commanders kicker through the first eight weeks of a single season the previous high was mark mosley who made 20 field goals on weeks one through eight in the 1982 season and then we also had Zacchaeus fumbling a punt after a good return Jeremy McNichols ended up getting on that ball and I think we ended up going on to, to score at least a field goal on that play so shouts out to Jeremy McNichols for that but Alamide the Butterfingers have to stop from between dropping passes against I believe it was the the Browns and then uh, muffin punts well not even muffin the punt but fumbling after the return come on dog we need better also shouts out to Percy Butler because he had an elite elite open field tackle at a certain point on special teams man that was gr great i thought it was tyler owens initially because i thought oh, okay oh, tyler owens is back but that was actually percy butler on that play also i love the camaraderie in the nfl because at a certain point in the game with deandre carter called for a touchback on a kickoff jeremy reeves pretended to blow him up and then they both kind of laughed about it and talked to each other for a little bit in passing i thought that was really cool also tress way had a really ugly punt with 12 minutes left in the third quarter that punt was terrible now granted it was only his like 13th punt, punt of the entire season so maybe he's a little rusty from not being utilized sometimes you got to put a little w40 in there to kind of make sure the joints are still moving maybe that's why but then later on in the game he ended up having the perfect punt to the bears five yard line where it like bounced on the ground and then bounced away from the end zone to make sure it wasn't a touchback and that was the tress way i know that's like arguably the best punter in the nfl that was insane man and so cyborg was almost perfect today um but then he ended up missing his uh punt his field goal at a certain point in the game and just to let you know it was not blocked it was just a terrible kick so he has one block he has one kick block one that he just straight up missed and those are his only two misses of the entire season he's made every pat and every field goal but two so far this season shouts out to austin cyborg he still deserves a lot of credit for this win because without even though he did miss that one field goal pretty badly without him making all of the other field goals we have no chance of winning this game this hell mary isn't even a consideration the game is over so shouts out to him for that now before we move on from and to like all of my other random thoughts i have at the end of the video i have a couple a couple of other people people's reviews of the game chris russell said, said while some are blaming coaches for everything and anything and speaking of that i had a thought in my head but i had to finish a thought earlier i forgot to mention it but shouts out to joe Wood jr for out coaching cliff kingsbury today because you can't say that that's happened much this year if, if at all any other point this year but today joe Wood jr out coached cliff kingsbury and i feel like that needed to be saluted again cliff kingsbury wasn't even terrible today like a lot of people act like he is but joe Wood jr had a master class of coaching today but either way Continuing with Chris, was Chris Russell, he said, because it's the lowest common denominator, let's give credit to some unsung heroes. First of all, Johnny Newton sack early, a forced fumble and reception at the goal line, um, a world recovery. Number two, Austin Cyborg, four field goals made. Third, Quan Martin, 10 tackles and one tackle for loss. Man, I completely agree. Then you have my boy, Eric Selly at Commander's Realm. He said, thoughts on today's win versus Chicago. He has a lot of points here as well, so go ahead and buckle up. He said, the first 59 minutes and 58 seconds of the game was ugly. Both teams were trying their best to lose. I agree. Also, Jaden Daniels was clearly not 100%, but even a slightly compromised Jaden is night and day better than Caleb Williams at this juncture. I completely agree. Jaden Daniels outplayed him, and Jaden Daniels was the one that was injured, not Caleb Williams. Also, while banged up, Jaden put up nearly 400 yards and had zero turnovers in the game that many was say was his off game that's a great point also terry mclaurin five receptions for 125 yards on a team that's supposed to be good and pass pro that's a great point this is supposed to be statistically according to advanced statistics the bears have the best pass defense in the nfl and terry mclaurin put up 125 yards on them that tells you everything you need to know about Jaden daniels and terry mclaurin right now also defense had a good game but they can only shut the bears down for so long i don't put the struggles from this game on them i agree johnny newton had his coming out game i agree they need to get one of their two starting left tackles back please i agree officiating was brutal but some of it was earned i completely agree the the refereeing was terrible they were definitely cheating 
anything for the Bears for the majority of that game. But at the same time, we shot ourselves in the foot, and you should never put yourself in a situation where the refs can win or lose you a game anyway. So that I put that blame on us, but it's it's no way we could just ignore how bad the refs were today. So it felt like they hired the Texas refs to get back at me for the Georgia game. You know, I'm a diehard Georgia Bulldog fan. Also, continuing with Commander's Realm, he said, I thought they got away with our identity, Brian Robinson, too early and weren't as aggressive as usual. I completely agree. Noah Brown will go down in history, but the throw and awareness of JD to keep that play alive is, is just as epic. I completely agree. JD Downs deserves a lot of credit for that. Also, they finally won in their Steelers jerseys. I thought that was funny. Um, the, we finally broke the black jersey curse like I talked about earlier. 6-2, and two, New York Giants next week. A real shot at 7-2. and two. No one thought this was possible. I agree. And then also, lastly, a game we will never forget. Now, before we get up out of here, I also have some random thoughts. First of all, quotes from the commanders after the game. Noah Brown said, quote, we're blessed to have five leading this team. I wouldn't want to play with any other quarterback, unquote. That's an elite endorsement. I don't know if y'all saw that clip, but immediately on the field while everybody's still celebrating the Hail Mary, everybody's celebrating and like half of the people mentioned that this is only possible because we have Jaden Daniels as our quarterback, and thank goodness we have Jaden Daniels. A lot of the veterans on this team know that, man, we are only in like this right now because we have finally have a franchise quarterback. Nick Allegretti said, quote, it was unbelievable. It was crazy, unquote. And Samuel Cosme said, quote, I've never been a part of something like that, unquote. So this team is absolutely elated. We are in heaven right now. You even had Kevin Durant after the game tweeting in all caps, ha, 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 ha. Let's go at Commanders. Let's do it. Then, shouts out to Ben House Log at Ben in Nike Sport um, on Twitter. He said, Bears fans talk trash for two whole weeks just for Jaden Daniels to have more yards than their entire team. Thank you for bringing that up. They, if anybody deserved an L like that, it's the Bears fan. That's the best feeling L ever. Like I said on my live stream, even after the game, we were doing the call-in show. We continued from the actual live stream of watching the game and analyzing it play-by-play -play with each other. We just went smooth into the call-in show because that's what I'm going to do. Every time the Commanders win, we're going to go from the regular live stream during the game straight into the call-in show. We're not going to reschedule it later or anything like that. We're going to go ahead and get that energy from all y'all immediately but i brought up a point that um that man i th the bears deserve this more than anybody else anybody else and that win i mean if we would have blown them out 40 to 0 that would have felt great as well but this just felt even sweeter just off of the fact that the bears have been the most annoying fan base in a two-week span ever in my life i again i grew up i'm from atlanta i, I uh, the reason i hate the falcons more than even the cowboys is because of how obnoxious they were throughout my entire life of growing up in atlanta even when i lived in new york i still most of my fans are the falcons fans so i had to deal with that while we've been bad they've been good going to super bowls even though 28 to 3 they're never going to live that down but they talk crazy trash of course cowboys fans talk crazy trash but i've never in my life in a two-week span seen a fan base be as annoying towards commanders fans as Jaden daniels being on his neck for absolutely no reason you know what i really want to say what they were on but golly they just couldn't keep Jaden daniels out of their mouth these past two weeks and so they deserve that more than anybody else i can't believe bears fans annoyed me more this past two weeks than cowboys fans probably ever have i, I i'm so mad i'm so glad this is just so beautiful that it happened to them this way also, shouts out to P. Haley for pointing out the fact he said Pepsi employees now have to prepare another Rookie of the Week press release for Jaden Daniels. He had the meme of the Popeyes worker just slunched over like done. Like, man, I'm sick and tired of this. God, Lee Jaden Daniels does it again. Also, shouts out to Craig Hoffman for this. Stevenson tipping in after talking junk and, and mostly getting burned all game is just a chef's kiss. But he also pointed out other favorite part of this. Brown is so chill catching it like I pointed out. My favorite celebration about the whole thing. He said Nick Allegretti cleaned the dude's clock at the end as well just to get in a free hit for no reason. And also, shouts out to Nance. The call was great. Also, shouts out to Mark Tyler. Brings up a great point. What's more unbelievable? That not one of the Bears defenders knocked that ball down or that J.D. Daniels busted up ribs and all launched that ball 65 yards in the air down to the goal line i would say Jaden daniels is more impressive also just to remind you we are still first place in the nfc east even after the eagles looked really good against the Bengals today and, and dominated them that game wasn't even close we are still the best team in the nfc east by record and i think we just straight up are i think when we play the eagles in a few weeks we will win that game also michael phillips said Jaden daniels best two moments have both been on national television that's how you build a fan base i love it against the 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 big Bengals Monday night everybody watching and against the Bears everybody watching right there that's how you build a fan base that's how you build a market and that's how you become a household name in every family's household I love it also 
Shouts out to Chad Ryan because he did point out the fact that this is probably the new number one best play of all time for the Burgundy and Go, at least in Landover. We're not going to talk about RFK. We're not going to talk about Super Bowls since we've been, been playing in Landover. FedEx Field, now Northwest Field. Is this the best play of all time? He said his previous contenders were RG3's 70 yard rushing touchdown versus Minnesota and Deshaun Taylor blocked um, for the touchdown and things like that. But he said right now, this is by far his new number one. I would agree. Um, he also said, um, Eric Selly, Commander's Realm said, imagine walking off the field as Montez Sweat right now. And I love it, man. The revenge is beautiful. Also, shouts out to Steve Mariucci because he lone wolfed us. Everybody else on NFL Network picks us to lose. Rich Eisen, Kurt, Gerald, everybody else. And you have Steve Mariucci doing the howl with the with the, the wolf head on and everything else. Dan Quinn also said in his press conference after the game, a lot of inches and things. But the most important thing he said is to, to know you're never out of it. That's a really big deal. And a win like this makes this team believe in themselves even even more so now we're gonna we were already bought in but now we're somehow but like we were already 100 bought in you could say we're somehow mathematically impossible but we are now 110 bought in after that game wins like that make you believe that no matter what you're never out of it and so i wouldn't be surprised if we pull off some more mi miracles moving forward also shouts out the commanders realm because i completely agree i don't understand the chicago hate towards Jaden daniels they could have just you know drafted them and yeah man that's the end of this video that is the perfect way to end this video man i really appreciate y'all make sure y'all stiff on that like button stiff on the subscription button stiff on the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinion video just like this one i gotta let my voice rest recording doing the live stream for like what since 4 p.m 4 p.m all the way to like 10 something so that's six hours of streaming and then another hour of talking in this video my abs are killing me it feels like i did a million sit-ups my throat hurts a little bit my voice is kind of gone but they i don't think y'all understand how much talking does to your core i mean i'm happy though you know i'm gonna have a, as much winning as we're doing as much talking i'm doing because we keep winning i'm doing three videos a day i'm gonna look like uh i'm gonna look like larry the lobster from spongebob by the end of this season and that's a good thing but man i'm about to just sit down and rest i'm probably even about to just run some rec on 2k it's double rep or maybe i'll get on call of duty since it came out but i think it's time i just i feel like i deserve to finally sit down and rest so i really appreciate y'all make sure you get in the comment section let me know you feel about everything discussed in the video please stiff on that like button on the way out of course let me know how you feel about the hell mary every aspect of this game do you agree or disagree with any of my points i really appreciate y'all on the way out please leave a like shout out to all y'all that pulled up to the stream everybody in the chat everybody that left a like on the stream shout out to everybody that donated y'all donated to the point that my cash app is broken now so i gotta get to the help center and figure out what that's about but I really appreciate y'all, man. That was the best stream ever. So I really appreciate y'all. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.